Okay, so acids and bases. Last video looked at uh, basically what they were, some of the uh, properties, pH and all that sort of stuff, strong and weak and all those things. This one's going to look at neutralization, what happens when acids meet bases, and then go through and give a few examples of the salts that can be made uh, when neutralization reactions take place. So first of all, what is neutralization? Well, a neutralization reaction is one where an acid, terrible arrow, acid reacts with a base. And in the process of doing so, what we produce is a solution. The resulting mixture is essentially something that has a pH of 7. It is neutral. It doesn't mean that it just makes water, um, although it, it does make water. It's saying that what you are left with is neither acid nor base. It is in between. We've perfectly reacted the acid with the base, and there is nothing now but neutral solution left. So if we remember back to the idea of acids releasing in solution these H plus ions and bases, particularly alkalis, soluble bases releasing hydroxide ions, essentially a neutralization reaction is these things reacting. So it's hydrogen ions reacting with hydroxide ions to produce water. And that is the crux of it. Hydrogen ions, hydroxide ions, and water. And you can see H, H, and the O gives us the H2O. This, as I mentioned already, is what has our pH of 7. It is neutral, what is left. However, there's a problem here. In the H plus ions, OH minus ions, whilst they give us the ionic, and this is an ionic equation, because it's ions reacting. Whilst this is the ionic neutralization reaction, it doesn't really help us in the sense that we can't just add hydrogen ions, we can't just add hydroxide ions. What we have to actually add is acids, proper acids, and bases. So what we find is that acid plus base, it does produce water, but it also produces a metal salt. Now where I'm specifying base here, I'm particularly talking about good arrow. Metal oxides for this particular general reaction. Metal oxides or metal hydroxides. And I'll come on to actually a proper equation in a moment that has an actual acid, the base, salt and water. But the key thing here is actually how we name the metal salts. And that doesn't just come up in this acid and base topic, it also comes up in a couple of others. Uh, but that's a very, very important thing. And really, you just need to know what happens uh, when three particular acids react and the endings of these metal salts that are produced. So this table shows us very simply three acids that are quite common at GCSE, hydrochloric acid, nitric acid, and sulfuric acid. You might see that's spelled with an F, but it doesn't really matter. And then the metal salt endings that each of these acid gives. And this will make a little bit more sense when I give an example. Hydrochloric acids produce metal salts that end in chloride. Nitric acid, nitrates. Sulfuric acid, sulfates. So an example, if I were to take hydrochloric acid and I reacted that with sodium hydroxide, what I'd produce is a metal salt where the metal from either the metal oxide or the metal hydroxide is the part, is the metal of the metal salt. So in this case, I'd have sodium. And my ending of my salt is dictated by the acid that's used. So in this case, hydrochloric acid would produce a chloride. So combining the metal of the metal hydroxide and metal hydroxide, uh, or the oxide, the base, and the acid, the ending, we get sodium chloride in this case, and then water, because that's always produced when we have our acids reacting with either our bases of metal oxides or metal hydroxides. Another example, just to use some other ones, if we had nitric acid, this time reacting with a different base, let's have potassium uh, oxide, What we produce now, same thing again, the metal, potassium, in this case nitric acid would give me a nitrate, and finally water. And obviously you can use any sort of combination of oxide, hyd uh, hydroxides, and the metals involved, and the acids, but it's always going to be answered, or it's always going to be named in terms of metal salt in the same way. The metal of the base is going to go across 
and then you're going to give your ending from the acid. Now there is another type of base that can neutralize, and I'll keep that metal salt bit there, there's another type of base that can also neutralize acids and those are metal carbonates. Now metal carbonates, as I say, neutralize acids but their reaction is not the same as here and that's why I specified here metal oxides and metal hydroxides react like this metal carbonates don't when they react with acids what we find is that we get a metal salt again which is really useful because we can use our same method now for naming those this time though we always get carbon dioxide formed and we get water formed on top of that. So still we're getting the water produced. This is still a neutral, uh, it would have a pH of 7, the solution that's formed, the carbon dioxide will disappear, uh, bubble away. Metal salt is going to be neutral, as is the water. Metal carbonate this time and the acid. So it's slightly different. Think of ways to remember it. The carbonate makes carbon dioxide, but it's neutralization, so it still forms water, for example. And a real, real uh, an equation here, rather than just using the term metal carbonate or acid, we could have something like sodium carbonate reacting with sulfuric acid and here we would use the exact same principle as before sulfuric acid would give me a sulfate my metal in this case comes from the metal carbonate which is the base I'll just make that point that is a base so this time sodium again my ending is sulfate and then I put on my other two products which is the carbon dioxide and of course the water and that's pretty much it your bases just the whiz through acids bases they neutralize each other they react together to produce if you do it in the right proportions that is to produce solutions which have a pH of 7 really we're looking for the ionic form of hydrogen ions reacting with the hydroxide ions to form the water in reality we have to look at acids and bases that's more specific uh, substances such as metal oxides and hydroxides in this particular instance metal salts are named based on the acid that's reacted the ending of that and the metal hydroxide or oxide that's used a couple of examples there metal carbonates another example of a base which reacts slightly differently to produce your metal salts again carbon dioxide and water with another example given so there you have it hopefully that's been of some help